So the first way that we can interact with the Python API in Rocky is to use the embedded Python shell in the GUI. Now to activate this, you'll need to make sure in the tools uh, toolbar, the Python shell object is switched on or checked. And you'll see on my screen here, I've just got a docked at the bottom um, central to the screen. So, okay, um, we can do some basic things with the, with the API. Essentially, it's a get and a set API. So we can get an object, we can get its attributes, and we could set those attributes um, or use various different methods, which will essentially operate on that data to make changes in our simulation. So we could do something, for example, uh, I'm going to get the, uh, the study object, which is essentially the top level. If we look at the data tree here, the API essentially follows this hierarchy. So at the highest level here, we've got our study. And as children of the study, you'll see that we have physics, modules, geometries, materials and particles, uh, and so on. So I'll grab the study. And maybe we'll do something like let's get the let's get the materials. So we'll call materials equals we'll grab the parent object, the study, and we'll get the material get the materials collection. So I'll use the autofill there to make things easy for me. Now, what is the first object in this list? What is the name? Default particles. So I'm just going to go ahead and assign DP default particles equals the first material in that list. And you'll see that I can now operate on this object, on this material, which is the default particles uh, in the GUI. And we could do something like get, we could get the current density. And that's going to return current density in kilograms per meters cubed. And what I could do from here, as I mentioned before, is rather than just get that parameter, I could set the current density and give that a value. Now I'm not gonna do that here because I do have results in this model. And if I do make a change to any of the settings, then it's going to need to essentially clear the results. It will have invalidated uh, the current set of results. So I'm not gonna go ahead uh, and make that change there. But another way that we can use the Python API uh, in, in Rocky is by essentially running and executing scripts uh, through the pre-post scripts window. Now again, to use this, just make sure that the pre-post scripts object um, or setting is switched on in the tools toolbar. And you'll see on screen here, uh, the window has popped up um, on the right hand side. Now, when we do have scripts, which might be attached to uh, the particular project that we've created, or the scripts might be uh, in a shared essentially directory for which all Rocky projects will have access to, the way that we can run these scripts is essentially by clicking uh, the green play bar, as you can see on screen. So if we uh, select something like, uh, let's export materials data, for example, um, if I click that green button there, or alternatively the green button here, that's going to go ahead and run that script. So let's go ahead and export materials data. And you'll see um, essentially what I can do with this particular script is, as the name suggests, it's going to take all of the material um, data, all the material related information, which includes, for example, bulk density, Young's modulus, all of this, as well as the different materials interactions, it's going to save that to a JSON file and export that so that I could actually re-import that uh, information into a new Rocky project. Essentially, I can use this to create a sort of material library based on previous materials that I have uh, calibrated and created. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up uh, the project directory and just bring my file explorer over to the screen. And you'll see that it has created this materials data uh, folder. We'll open up this file, bring that over, and you'll see that we have a list of materials, default particles, density, stiffness, and so on, and all of the respective uh, combinations of materials interactions. 
So what I could do is open up a new Rocky session. Just bring that over to the window. And I could run another script to import the materials data. So we'll hit OK, select a file to import the data. I'll go ahead and find the JSON file, which we've just created. Now that's completed. If we go back, we can see it's it's imported all of the materials uh, that I had in the previous project. If I just go ahead and go back to this Rocky, you'll see I've got material series two high, which has now been created in this new MT project. And then of course, all the materials interactions will have been imported as well. Okay, so that's nice. Um, but this all assumes that you know we've already uh, built our our scripts. They are ready to run. We already knew how to uh, create these scripts. But one of the other things that we can do, and one of the tools that we can use to get started with scripting, um, particularly if maybe we're not really familiar with Python, is to use the recording feature. And so you'll see in the window here, uh, there's a circular red button, which looks like a classic record button. That is exactly what it is. So we can use this to record a script. Um, and let's go ahead and do that. I'll call this, um, maybe we want to uh, set the camera view. So maybe I want to automate some, uh, maybe animation export or image export, and I want to make sure it's taking that screenshot from the same camera angle. So set camera view, I'll hit okay. And I'll just change the view to some arbitrary uh, angle. Maybe we'll zoom in a little bit and I'll hit stop. just randomly change the um, the view. You'll see we've created a new script, set camera view. And I'll just go ahead and run that. And we've gone back to uh, the view that it had recorded for me. So there's a few different things that we can do with the, with the Python API. You've already seen, essentially, we can go through and set up a project. We can get and set various different parameters. Um, but we can also use, of course, the a Python API for, for post-processing tasks. And one of the more powerful things that we can do is to essentially export uh, various pieces of information. And so we could export uh, boundary information. Maybe we wanna couple this with a finite element uh, solver. That may or may not be ANSYS mechanical. We'll need to, of course, extract that data somehow. This can be done through the Python API. And you'll see all I'll need to do is run the script, export boundary information. Let's hit the green play button on that. Select the geometry to export. Let's go ahead and export the loads on the tray, set the time. Um, and let's go ahead and find the, uh, let's go force, force nodal X, force nodal Z. And I'm just gonna hit enter on that. And we should see in again, hit tray. Uh, and this time, let's just select nodal X, hit enter on that. You'll see now in the project directory, it's created a new folder, geometry data, and a new CSV folder or file, which contains the node ID, X, Y, and Z coordinates, and the data that we had selected for export. In this case, just the nodal X uh, force. I can do this for boundary information. I can also do this for particle information. So I could set uh, the time that I'm interested in and then select all of the different uh, parameters that I want to export. So particle mass, particle shape, uh, particle surface area, just arbitrarily selecting all of that, um, all of those bits of info. And it will have done the same thing 
particle data. It's created a CSV file which contains that data. Now it's taking a bit of time to execute this script because of course it has to iterate through all of those uh, particles. But there we go, that's complete and it's saved all that data. Now we could take that data outside of Rocky and post-process it uh, further. Alternatively, we could do post-processing uh, with Python inside of Rocky, maybe by executing another script or by using the Python shell, of course. So what I'm going to do as an example of that is let's run this script, which is going to measure the static angle of repos uh, from the bottom and top of this pile. It's going to automatically generate that contour for me and save some data in the project directory. So that's great. Um, but what if I wanted to run this, maybe many iterations of this, and I wanted to have that data, the angle of repos, automatically saved uh, and exported. I'll need to essentially automatically run this script, which we can do because this script is associated with the project. You'll see that I can essentially attach it under this prepo scripts object and make sure that that will run after the simulation. So every time I run this project, it's going to automatically execute that script. So in the same way as we had a repository of ready to use modules, there's also a repository of ready to use scripts. And we used, we used a few of those. So exporting boundary and particle related information, those were examples of these ready to use scripts that you'll have access to. Now, one of the other useful um, features from an API slash Python perspective is the concept of PyAnsys. This is just a set of client libraries that integrate with ANSYS software which can be used again to, of course, script and automate and create custom workflows. Essentially through PyRocky, which is a package within the broader collection of PyAnsys packages. Um, this is essentially a thin layer that just enables remote calls to Rocky using the pre-post API that we've already been using. Now I've actually written a really quick example uh, to showcase this that uses the same angle of repos case that we had just looked at. Uh, and I'll just bring it up on screen here. Now essentially what this does is takes a list of rolling resistances, comes through, loads the project, um, and essentially creates a directory for the results output, runs this post-processing function, which loops through uh, the list of rolling resistances, solves the model, calculates the angle of repos from the top and bottom of the pile, as we saw before, plots that contour, writes some data, and goes back, changes the rolling resistance again, continuing the loop. So now, of course, rather than having many different projects saved and maybe queued up in the Rocky scheduler, it's just a single session, just updating the rolling resistance uh, and letting it cycle through. So I'm just gonna go and go ahead and hit run on that and leave that to run uh, in the background. And hopefully this will run nicely in the background, but we'll go back to the slides where I've actually already ran this script uh, with some slight changes. It's just a finer particle size and a higher number of iterations. And now what you can see um, is the plot that's generated uh, for each iteration, showing of course the measured angles from top and bottom, as well as the curves of how the angle of repos will vary based purely on the variation of rolling resistance as I defined it in that script. So just do note that this curve is, is, is not a general solution. It only applies to this specific configuration, which means for example, if I change the particle size, shape or friction coefficient values, then the behavior of the curve would be different. How much different will depend on which parameters have been changed and of course by how much we've actually changed them. But you can see how I've used this simple script to run this basic sensitivity study uh, just in the background, essentially creating my own little project manager and parameter study uh, all in just one script. 